Hey everyone, welcome back to the bathroom renovation series. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on a variety of finishing touches. Let's get into it. First up, Bianca and I applied two coats of the Kilns Interior Primer. This is my go-to primer for all of my projects and I really like its coverage. We then painted the surface with Cloud Cover by Benjamin Moore, which is an off-white color, so I didn't really record that since it would just look like we we're priming yet again, but I think it looked really nice, especially up against the future white trim. Once all the walls were painted, I used Henry's Feather Finish to create a concrete accent wall. This stuff is extremely easy to apply, you just have to keep in mind that it dries pretty quick, but all you need to do is add water to the mixture and then you can use a drywall knife to just spread it around. And it's pretty artistic and pretty forgiving, so it's kind of up to the eye of the beholder on this sort of stuff, but I've used it in a lot of projects in the past and I made an entire video on this headboard wall. If you want to check it out, I'll link it up in the top right corner, but as you can see it gives off a really cool texture and doesn't take too long to apply and it's also pretty inexpensive with it only being $20 for a box. And I was able to do this whole wall with just one box and still had some left over. Also you want to make sure that you tape all of your edges as it can get pretty messy and this just allows for a nice clean line on any of your transitions. Then next up was trim. I ended up opting for PVC trim as opposed to MDF or wood trim as it's waterproof and a bit more durable as well. I was really proud at how precise I was able to make the waterline hole for the toilet. You'd normally put a cover over this, but in this case, I don't think I need to. After installing the valve, it was on to bringing in the toilet. Some people prefer to put the wax ring on the floor and then the toilet on top of it, but I prefer the other way around as I get a better seal this way. I've installed a few toilets in the past and they haven't been too difficult, but this one was quite a challenge because as you can see, it's all one piece, there's not a separate tank to this toilet, as well as the P-trap is completely covered by the base. Because of these reasons, it was quite heavy to lift into position, as well as it was quite hard to make sure that we precisely put it over the toilet flange as it's a bit hard to see down there, but we eventually got it. I could then hook up the water line and turn the water on to fill the tank for the very first time. It works! I just had to install the seat and we were all done. Next up was installing the floating vanity and it uses a French cleat system to hold itself up off the ground. And here I'm just screwing in the support piece into the wall. I made sure to hit at least three studs and put three screws into each stud. And then we were able to finally put it in position. I really love the color of this vanity and I really think it pulls out a lot of the colors from the ceiling that I did in last week's episode. And this vanity came with a built-in sink in the countertop, so I went ahead and installed the faucet ahead of time as I find it a lot easier. And then I applied a bead of silicone around the cabinet of the vanity, and then we could bring in the countertop and put it in place. This countertop is quite heavy, and there was a bit of a concern that the French cleat might not be strong enough to fully support both the cabinet and the top. However, it's actually plenty strong, and I'm not worried about it at all. It's quite surprising how strong a French cleat really is. I then added a bead of white silicone behind the sink where it meets the wall, and this is to prevent water from getting back down in there, but also it just makes it look a lot cleaner too. I then added in the drain, and there's a variety of ways to do this, but I find the easiest is to apply some plumber's putty to the underside of the drain and make sure it just goes all the way around and it's nice and compacted. Then I push it into place and kind of pull it from the bottom a little bit and just clean up any of the excess that squeezes out, and that's it. Then it was time to turn on the water and test for any leaks. If the water shut off for quite some time, there is going to be some air in the line, so don't be surprised if that's the case, but everything worked properly and I just made sure that the both hot and cold lines worked and were oriented correctly as well. It's also a good idea to make sure that all of your drain lines are hooked up correctly and your P-trap is working properly by filling up the sink pretty high and then letting it drain all at once.
I then installed the cover plates for both the electrical outlets and switches, and here I'm using the screwless cover plate. I think it looks a lot cleaner, it just takes a little bit of force to get on there. The left switch operates the exhaust fan, and the right switch operates the main lights in the room that's also on a dimmer switch. I could then finally peel off the plastic on the heated floor controller, and if you want to see that entire video of that installation, I'll link it up in the top right hand corner. Next, I could install the mirror with an integrated light, and this just hardwires into an outlet behind the wall, and it just mounts to the wall with a French cleat system. I then mounted the towel bar and made sure to use my laser level here as it makes the aligning process a lot easier. Alright, so now I'm trying to figure out where to mount the toilet paper holder and I'm glad I tested this before actually installing it. But I put a piece of toilet paper on here and it was just like, uh, kind of which height looks best and I was thinking around here and then I realized I wouldn't be able to get the toilet paper roll off because of the wall and just be stuck on here forever. So the options are to keep it in this orientation and mount it over here which I think looks pretty bad. I could also mount it up against this wall like this or we can just turn it upside down. You will see these two set screws but I think that's pretty minor and then we just have it mounted like that. So I think that's the option we're going to go with. Then we just had a few more finishing touches left. This window allows a lot of natural light into the bathroom, which we really love. However, it does look directly into our neighbor's window, so we're going to cover it up with some translucent film. And that's going to wrap up this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something along the way. I also wanted to highlight this mirror as I think it's pretty cool. As you can see, you can change the color temperature from a warm setting to a very cool setting, and you can also change the brightness level so you can dim it or raise it to a higher brightness. And lastly, there's an anti-fog feature so when you have a very hot shower, it doesn't fog up the mirror. I'll make sure to link it down below as well as all the other products I use in this video. I also added some motion sensor LED lights beneath the vanity so when you walk in they turn on. These are the same ones that I used in the lofted bed video if you've seen that, but I think they're a really nice touch. And I just really love all the colors in this bathroom. The concrete accent wall, the wood ceiling, the white shower, and the black trim. I think they all just go really nicely together. If you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button as it really helps me out and helps the channel grow. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as we post a new DIY video every single Saturday. And as always, thanks for watching and happy building. See you next week.